Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is a 2024 supernatural comedy film. It is a sequel to Ghostbusters Afterlife. This is the fifth film altogether in the Ghostbusters franchise, but the fourth overall in the original series story. This film is set two years after the events of Ghostbusters Afterlife, and we see that the Ghostbusters must join forces with their so-called new recruits to save the world in New York City from a powerful, death-chilling curse who seeks to build a big army. Now, this is directed by Gil Keenan, written by Gil Keenan and Jason Reitman. Of course, everyone returns from Afterlife, as do the original how do I say, uh, actors from the Ghostbusters franchise. We have Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, and Annie Potts. Now, this movie runs for 115 minutes, just under the two-hour mark, and had a budget of $100 million. Now, this is a very, very interesting story because this is a new baddie, you could say, in the whole aspect of the Ghostbusters universe. You know, it's very different than what you would think it could be. But what this movie does well is trying to find the basis and the backstory of what this death chill is and this orb that is the main focal point of this story. Not only that, we have a lot. And I, when I mean a lot, we have a lot of characters in this movie trying to focus on one character but then focusing on another. We have McKenna Grace's character as Phoebe Spangler, who is the granddaughter to Egon Spangler. And she kind of befriends a ghost and tries and goes on her own little mission. Oh, we have Finn Wolfhard's character as Trevor kind of has his own mission by trying to catch Slimer. Slimer is in this. It's great to see Slimer back. Love it. But it's like so many things happening at one time. All the while, we have Paul Rudd's character of Gary Gruberson kind of doing his thing with Callie, uh, Carrie Coon's character. And then you have Kumal Nanjani, Patton Oswalt, and you just have everything happening at one time. There are some comedic moments in this that are funny, but it doesn't hit the mark like it should. And it's really, really interesting. The movie is really fun. The, the CGI is great. Seeing the ghosts and how everything is done the proton packs once again bill murray as peter vankman you think is in it for a long time he's not dan Aykroyd is in it more so as well as ernie hudson and seeing annie potts as janine milnitz put on the suit is really really good not only that william atherton as walter peck is back and he is now the mayor of New York City. Yes, the character that you love to hate in those 80s movies from Ghostbusters to Die Hard is in this movie once again, but he's now the mayor. How does a character stay that long in a city for all those years and become mayor? What did he have to do in order to become mayor? Uh, there are a lot of callbacks to the previous films, most notably Ghostbusters 1 and Two, and there are a lot of Easter eggs in this, especially where Paul Rudd's character is like, uh, he sings the Ghostbusters song. That's a funny moment, but then it's like, okay, what's going on? Now, the orb aspect to this is really, really interesting. The backstory is really, really good, and how everything works so well. The history and how everything goes is interesting, but Kumal Nanjali is just I feel like just put in there as a character. Paul Patton Oswalt is also really really good but then you have the character as Garaka uh, which is this ice demon and you see how everything is. That's a really fun character when you see it up close and it's just in your face. There are moments in the trailer where you see it happening and we see everyone coming together. There are two minor characters that really didn't even serve a purpose. And those characters, I would say, are Phoebe's friends or Trevor's friends from Afterlife. And it's just, you know, it's the one who had the podcast in Afterlife, that young uh, kid. But other than that, it's an interesting story and how certain things are happening, but it's not, it's like you're watching three or four different stories happening in one film in under two hours. It's like, whoa. The final act really, really picks up, and that's what's noticeable about Ghostbusters movies. The slow build and then the final act structure, which is really, really good and fun and interesting. Not only that, we have the writing. The comedy, like I said, is there, 
but then not there. This is a fun ride of a movie, but I feel like after this, this should be it for the Ghostbusters franchise. We did enjoy how Ghostbusters Afterlife came back after so many years. It was done perfectly. It was done well. It was a nice send-off and homage to certain characters in the franchise. But then all of a sudden we see this film. It's like, okay, Frozen Empire, what can happen? You're back in New York City. Going back to the place where everything started in the first one. What can you do? What can happen? And it's what happened. This is a fun movie, but it wasn't put together well enough where we had to focus on so many different characters. And so many different characters is really, really hard to juggle. Especially like, okay, we see one character, what's going on and what's happening. Just give me an entire new movie, a sequel, focused on the original OG Ghostbusters characters. Venkman, Stans, Zenimore, Melnitz. Give me Rick Moranis. That's what I want to. For me, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire gets 3 out of 5 stars. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you think of it? What did you think about the aspect of the story, the writing, the directing? Did you like how everything was put together? Did you like the new villain that was in this? What did you think about the death chill? Who was your favorite character? Who was your least favorite character? And do you think that that's it? That this is, should be the last... Ghostbusters movie in the franchise. Let me know in the comment section below about all the questions I just asked and also let me know what rating you would give this movie. And be sure you click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for new review videos on my channel. I'll see you all in the next review video. I'm Mr. Filmstock. Thank you so much for tuning in.